what do you do next after you've installed the ubuntu operating system on your pc in this video we are going to take your operating system from this to this hello friends welcome to the channel and it's good to have you back whenever i have a clean installation of the ubuntu operating system these are some of the things that i do to it to make it up and running and productive for my usage and I believe it's going to be of help to you as well. First things first, I go into settings to make some changes there. Under the display tab, you need to make sure that the resolution you have there matches with what your display uses. Also, you need to change the refresh rate. There are certain PCs that come with 120 hz and it might not be enabled by default. You also have the night light feature which you can set up to make sure that it turns on from sunset to sunrise or you determine the time that you want it to be on. Under the sound tab, it's great that you set up your input and output devices. If you have an external uh, microphone or speaker, this is where you will get to make those changes to set it up for. Also, you have the over amplification feature which you will find on Ubuntu, which makes it possible for you to increase your volume level beyond 100%. You can try it out, it has always been of help to me. For power modes, I would suggest that you use the performance option when you have it connected to battery so that it's able to use the maximum of your system resources. But if you are connected to battery and you don't have much running, it's great to go with the power saver mode. You also have the balance mode, which lies between the two. I'm sure you wouldn't like it if your screen keeps on going off frequently. Now you can make changes to that under the screen blank section where you get to choose time between 1 and 15 minutes or never at all. You can also make changes to the duration it takes for the PC to go into sleep mode or get suspended be it on battery or when it's plugged in. You can save yourself the pain of having to turn on your PC all over again just because you mistakenly press the power button. Go to your power button behavior and then change it from power off to suspend. I also like to see my battery percentage so that I know when to put it on charge. You always get the chance of changing your desktop background under the appearance section. And you also have the chance of choosing between dark mode and light mode. I prefer the dark mode so that I can easily catch the bugs and not stress my eyes as well. The dock section controls the bar that contains your paint apps as well as apps that have been opened at the moment. The auto hide option makes the bar hidden whenever you have an app that is in full screen mode. You also have the panel mode which makes the bar fill the entire length of the screen. If the default icon size doesn't go well with you, you can either increase it or decrease it. The position option allows you to take the bar either to the left, the right or to the bottom. Just like the snapping feature on Windows that makes it possible for you to stack different open apps on your workspace, the tiling feature on Ubuntu makes that possible as well. Now the tile group option makes it a bit different. If you have different apps that have been now uh, stacked together and let's say both of them have been minimized and then you open one of them. The other one automatically opens with it. So usually I disable this feature so that I'm able to work freely with all the apps that I have run. You can make changes to the default apps that you have for each section. VLC is my go-to option for anything that is media related, be it music or video. The next place to visit is the mouse and touchpad tab where you can customize the gestures that you use for both your touchpad and the mouse. If by chance you are not able to set up the original language um, during the installation process or even with the date and time, this is the right place to do it under the system tab. Still in the system tab, you can add or remove users from the operating system, change their passwords and also modify the profile picture of each account. If you would like to change the device name on the operating system, Simply tap on the about section and then you can do that. Moving away from settings, the next thing I'll usually do is to install the apps that I frequently use on the operating system. Now for some reasons I decided to go with a script this time so that it's able to install some of those apps instead of me doing that manually. And to be able to do that is on my GitHub repository. So I'll first of all sign into my um, Firefox 
account so that everything on my web browser is synced perfectly and then I can visit GitHub to get the script. The repository has loaded, go to the code block and then download the zip file from there. When the download is over, extract the zip file and then open the folder it provides you with. Go to the randoms folder and then we have the file called allapps.sh. Let me briefly take you through the apps that it installs for me. Yeah, so the first thing that it does is to update the operating system using sudo apt update. And then it goes on to install Nyla. Now Nyla is just a package repository just like you have the apt or apt. And instead of using apt, I'll be going with Nyla for most of my installations. Usually that one is uh, faster and then reliable as well. So after the installation is done, we update and upgrade the Nyla packages before I go on to uninstall the current Firefox that I have. The Firefox that comes installed on Ubuntu is from Snap and it's a bit slow. So I usually uninstall it and then install a different form of it. The script also installs the Genome Shell Extension Manager and the Genome Tweaks as well, which will be used uh, later on. I also have to install VLC because it doesn't come installed with the operating system. But if you began the video with me, you would have realized that we had VLC in the settings tab. And that's because the settings part of the video was recorded later on. When you have an app that is open and also appears on the dock, you will realize that if you should click on the icon there when the app is opened, it's not going to minimize by default, it just remains there. So with the G settings, it's going to make it possible for you to click the icon and then the app automatically minimizes. The script also enables the firewall if it's disabled and then it installs Flatpak. Flatpak is similar to the default app store that you have on the operating system, but this one has more apps that you can explore in the app store. The script is going to install other web browsers in addition to Firefox, you have Microsoft Edge and then Google Chrome. Now why trade web browsers? That's because I do um, web development, usually front-end, so I have to test it on different web browsers to see how the um, web app works. OBS Studio will also be installed, which is an app for screen recording and live streaming as well. It has many other features inside the app and it comes at no cost to you. Last but not the least, the script installs Node.js and then finalizes everything by updating the operating system. Now that you know what the script does, you can close the file and then open the terminal. When we list the files that are found in the folder, you need to check the um, allapps.sh file to, to make sure it's executable. If it's executable, you'll see an X attached to the um, description section that you have here. But if it's not there, you can type change mode plus X together with the file name to make it executable. And then what you do next is to run the file using sudo with the file name. This installation process might take a long time. But there's something I want to show you during the Nyla installation. There will be a part where you are asked to select mirrors that will be used um, for Ubuntu updates. Usually when Ubuntu wants to search for updates, it goes through some of these sites to get those updates. So what you want to do is to select the mirrors that have the least time. So in my case, it's the first, second and then the third one. And then the process continues from there. Once in a while, you need to confirm some changes that need to be made. Once the script is done with the install, it's good to find out if all your apps were installed successfully. If any of them were not installed, you could run the script again or just download those ones manually. Now the app installation doesn't end there. There are certain apps that I'll have to go to their main site to be able to download their setup. Some of these apps include Visual Studio Code for my programming. You have Extreme Download Manager for managing my internet downloads, which is also free. And then VirtualBox for managing my virtual machines. Since Flatpak is set up and running, 
I decided to install some of the apps from there. We have Telegram, we have Portals, Discord, and then Extension Manager. At this point, the video isn't quite clear because I had to convert the recording videos from WebM to MP4, and that is what caused it to behave this way. Once I have the setups downloaded from their site, I can install them using the App Store. When you double click on it, the App Store helps you do the installation. I will advise that you allow VirtualBox finalize its installation before you terminate it. Otherwise, it will not allow any other app to install. But if for some reason you terminated it before you finished, and what you can do is to open the terminal and then type in this command. Once you type it in, it's going to um, continue the installation and allow you to set it up. My PC has secure boot enabled and so it needs me to include the key into secure boot. It will ask you to enter a password which you should keep in mind because when you are restarting the PC, this password will be asked for for you to enroll the key into secure boot. With that, you are done with the virtual box installation. You can do same for the other apps that you downloaded. I also installed my SQL and my SQL Workbench for database management. Yeah, I believe that is it for the installations. The next thing we can do is to open Twix which was installed earlier on and then go to the Windows tab. There are two things that we'll do here. We have the first one which is attach modal dialogs. If you have an app that is open, for instance VS Code, and then there is a dialog box, probably you want to open a file. If you have this option turned on, what's going to happen is that when you try moving the dialog box, the app is going to move together with the dialog box. But once you have it turned off, the, when you move the dialog box, the app remains and just the dialog box moves. Well, I don't know how it's going to help you, but I find it not nice when the app moves together with the dialog box. The second thing to look at is the Windows Focus feature that allows you to focus on different apps whenever you hover your mouse over it. Now, it helps a lot when you are trying to probably copy something from one app to the other and many other um, scenarios that are there. Even under this feature, you also have the erase windows when focused. When this option is enabled and then you hover your mouse over any window or app that is opened, the app comes on top of the other ones that are there. Another app that is very important to visit is the extension manager. And if you have watched this far in the video, you would have noticed that the status bar that we have on top here has a blurry effect attached to it. That is possible using extensions that we have in this app. Now, Blur My Shell is an extension that makes it possible for you to blur certain parts of your um, desktop from the status bar to the dock area and also the all apps menu as well. It makes it possible for you to blur those parts based on your liking instead of having a basic boring dark background. Another extension worth installing is Caffeine that prevents the PC from going to sleep or going off entirely when you have important things on doing. Let's say for instance you have a download happening but the PC goes to sleep after some time. If you have Caffeine enabled, it prevents the PC from going to sleep which will allow your download to be able to finish. Clipboard Indicator is another extension that keeps history of the things that you have copied be it text or even images. If you would like to have a visual of the performance of your system resources, Top Hat makes that possible. Well, if you look towards the right hand side of the status bar that you have here, you will see some visual representations there such as the network speed, you have the processor graph and also the RAM usage. These are the extensions that I have installed and then you can find them when you go to the browse tab. Just go there, type in the name of the extension. You can um, filter based on relevance, names, among others, and it should show you the extensions that you have there. The last thing on the menu is to install TimeShift, which is an app that allows you to back up all the apps that you just installed and also the settings and changes that you made to your workplace. This way, when anything happens to your workspace that you don't like, you can simply revert to the previous backup that you made. 
The installation is done and we can take a look at it. When you open it for the first time, you are provided with a wizard where you get to select the snapshot type. In the next page, it shows you the partitions that can be supported for this backup and that's usually the ext4 type of partitions where I have my Ubuntu run. In this page, you get to select how frequently you want backups to take place, be it monthly or hourly or daily, it's up to you, and how many of the latest snapshots should we keep. Um, one thing you should know is that this app takes a lot of space. So I'll go with the monthly and it should keep just two of the snapshots. Within this section, you can allow the app to back up your personal files if you want it to and then you are done with the process. You are then greeted with a simple looking interface and then you can create a new snapshot. The good thing about this app is that with subsequent snapshots that are created, it's going to build up on what was there previously. The backup process is now done and then you can take a break, probably after you learn how to restore a backup. To restore a snapshot, simply select it and then click on restore. Make the necessary changes here and click on next. The restore process should begin. And now you can take that break you were waiting for. If you're able to come this far in the video, I just want to thank you very much for that and I guess the video was of help to you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet like the video drop your comments and then share to others as well have a nice day and then see you in the next video